The Malibu Comics journey into the Ultraverse continues right here on Crypto Comics with Sludge, number one. I was, uh, I was pretty confident that I was not going to like this comic book. And then I actually read it, and uh, it wasn't too bad. So let's just dive right into it. Uh, we got the uh, Sludge. I mean, you know, what else can you say about him? He's Sludge. You can take the cop out of the sewer, but you can't take the sewer out of the cop? That doesn't make sense. Lower Manhattan. Very low. The level at which society's substratum meets the Earth's crust. From here, there's nowhere left to fall. Now granted, I am one, but it doesn't take a genius to crack this case, folks. This is on the radio, just so you know. This is like a, uh, a Rush Limbaugh sort of a character. Listen to the facts and see how they add up to you. Follow the bouncing logic, doop doo wah Detective Sergeant Frank Hogue. 20-year veteran of the NYPD and member of that unprotected minority called White Males has been missing for three weeks. Last anyone heard, Sergeant Hogue was responding to a call about a break-in at the corporate headquarters of Caldwell Pharmaceuticals here in Manhattan. Next morning, Caldwell employees found evidence of violence in a high-security lab on the 44th floor, including a puddle of blood, a floor full of bullet holes, and assorted shell casings. There was no sign of Hogue. Is it just me? Has Chase Naylor gone a little batty here? Or does this sound like murder to you too? Uh-huh. So guess what our mayor and police chief have to say about it? Nothing, I bet. You got it. Zip, zero, nada, nothing. The chief says there's no clues. Shit. Right. Can't analyze the blood, because it was mixed with chemicals. Might not even be Hogue's. But he's got no sympathy when a white male officer eats lead in the line of duty. That's just a police matter, according to his dishonor. And our ethnically sensitive mayor? He's got time to visit the grieving mother of a pusher shot by a cop in a bust. Jeez Louise. Maybe we got to explain to the sniveling bureaucrats why the senseless death of a dedicated officer might perturb us. Hell, man, I know why I'm perturbed. Cause it wasn't you that popped his cop ass. Steady, shop right coming up. It's time to become activists, ladies and gents. So I just want to say that Malibu Comics feels very modern. This is something I said in Solitaire Number One. This is a, a book that feels like it could have been written yesterday, as opposed to what 20, 25 years ago. This was written, October ninety three. Wow. It feels very modern. Speaking of written, it's written by Steve Gerber. Aaron Lopresti did the pencils. Chris Olm was the editor. Paul Mounts, color design. Gary Martin, the inker. Patrick Ousley, how could I forget you, my lovely letterer. And the interior colorist, Violet Hughes. So anyways, where were we? It's time to become activists, ladies and gents. Pick up that phone. Call City Hall. Tell them... We've had it up to the nostrils with senseless death. Julio, present from the fang, homeboy. Tell them we don't care if their precious minorities want to shoot each other. Puck, 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 puck. And then, you know, uh, man shot, woman shot in the head, homeless guy shot, mother and her baby shot. Tell them the decent people of New York are sick of crime and even sicker of excuses. So everyone is dead, including an infant child has been murdered in this comic book which is not something you would see in Marvel and DC back then. No doubt about it. Honestly, I don't think you'd even get to see that in, a, in an image comic book. No comment on Valiant. We want action. Next time we'll invite him along. Turn the fat fuck off and find some music, man. And the, you know, all of a sudden the manhole opens. Oh, excuse me, the person hole opens. And Shloop, Bob Shalop comes out. Knew it had to be debtors. No, killers. That's it. Damn, my head. This is going to be a theme throughout the whole comic, just so we're clear. And it's going to drive me nuts if I, if I have to read this every time. He keeps misspeaking. Uh, and just keeps, oh, my head, my head. It's the chemicals. Jackie, look out. What the hell is that shit? Oh, that thing. Excuse me, I'm getting too excited with the dirty words. Kawunch, pull over. Young pongs, punks, damn head. 
Ugliest beast I've ever. Beast hell and talked. You really care? What is it, man? Besides, in a way. Uh, and I shoot it. Can't believe it's still standing. If it can bleed, it can die. Where's your heart, homeboy? That it there. And he stabs him with this sword that he just happens to carry around with him, which is fine with me. You know, it's a comic book. Just carry around a samurai sword. Why the hell not? So they take out Sludge, but Sludge just gets right back up. You know, you can't stop him. Mixed up, yeah. And slow. Too slow. Hurts. Just to think. Hurts. Sometimes. Worse than bullets. Jeez, give me room. I'll hack the slimy shit to pieces this time. Do it. Whack him in half. Of course, that's not going to work. Uh, he grabs him by the hands and throws him, and then look like his hands are melted together. I can't open my hands, my hands, uh. Give me, give me. Hurts to talk, too. You want it? Come get it. Not the nub. Damn, not the gun, punk. Yeah, I'm just going to keep doing that. I can't read that. It, that was the only, this is the literally the only part of this comic that kind of graded on me other than one other thing, which we'll get to at the end, that really, really graded on me. <sighs> Let me go, I'll blow his brains out. And so like he just grabs this dude by the face and it just melts him. It just turns him into friggin' clay face, right? Uh, and I actually thought this was a really cool power. Like you, I've never seen this power before. This is different. Dead, suffocated under all that new skin. Painful way to die, I hog. Hope. Damn head. <sighs> okay. And grabs the gun, hits him in the head with the gun. Chokes out the Asian, uh, breaks his back like he's Shadowhawk, uh, and then like they all run. He throws him into the other one. The the suitcase full of money, of course, is gonna fall now. And uh, he walks up and he just curb stomps him right there. Just boom, just smashes his brains all over the concrete like this is a trauma film. Man, Lloyd Kaufman should maybe consider making this into a comic book actually or into a movie actually this might not be a a bad comic of course this is owned by marvel now so that would never ever happen because they're never gonna let these characters see the light of day again marvel marvel owns it now it's very sad actually very sad very disappointing because all these characters were basically just left to rot so he takes the money, and then we have a flashback, okay? And you, and you don't know this is a flashback. Uh, it took me a minute to realize, like, oh, this is... See, because they, when they show the flashback back here, right? You know, it's all sepia tone, sepia tone, whatever you want to say. And so it was very clear that this was, uh, you know, a flashback. But then you come here, and uh, this part's actually... This part's pretty good. Uh, this is where the crooked cop, Hogue which is, you know, the cop that disappeared, right? Hogue. This is it. This is the flashback to what happened. Gotta ask for your gun, Frank. Stand it up. Nothing personal. Glad you decided to show up. We've been close for a long time, Frank. Wanted to give you every chance to change your mind. Don't think you can sell me on this one, pal. I know. That's why I asked you to meet me here. So you could talk to somebody who might stand a better chance. Sergeant Frank Hode, Mr. John Paul Marcello. Good evening, Sergeant. Vittorio tells me you've declined to perform a certain service for us. Please sit down. Let's try to reason this out, shall we? Sergeant. We can talk, yeah. But I won't change my mind. I've done my share of favors for your people. But waxing a guy, let alone another cop, uh-uh. You're making a dangerous choice, Hoag. And that bum Quinn isn't worth it. He's working three corners. Running errands for us, selling information to the Dragon Fang, and drawing a salary from the department. You know I can look away when a drug deal goes down. I could tip you to a raid so you're gone by the time the boys show up, but I don't kill people. In that case, may we rely upon your silence. If you ice a cop? Come on, man, you know I can't. He's not a cop. He's a whore. He'd sell out you and his own sister as a package deal for the right price. I don't care if he sleeps with poodles. I don't do hits. And if you do, 
You don't want to tell me about it. Clear? Perfectly clear. Victoria warned me you were a stubborn man. I had hoped he was wrong. Well, yeah, sorry to disappoint you. It wasn't what he wanted to hear, but Marcello respects you, Frank. I can always tell. Uh-huh. Just level with me, Vic. Where does this leave us? You put us in an awkward position. We have to look out for our interests. In other words, our arrangement's finished, right? So I'll learn to live on a cop's paycheck again? There are worse things. I'll need my gun back, Vic. I'm gonna miss you, Frank. We all are. Bam! And he shoots him. Don't make this difficult, Frank. There's no place to run. Frank, like, leaps into the elevator and hits the buttons. Deserve this. Been a damn fool. Sell yourself respect for a couple grand a month? How else could it turn out? Damn. Locked. Don't bother, Hog. It's over. Grenade. Ba-boom. And, he, you know, he falls into this vat of chemicals at the pharmaceutical company, and they spill all over him. You know, very reminiscent of Clayface. If you ever saw that episode of the old Batman animated series, that's still the best animated series, like, maybe of all time. Probably. What's this stuff? Stuff burns. Gotta get up on fire. Every inch of skin on fire. Can't move. No need. And they just pump him full of lead. We'll finish it here. Wrap him in something and take him downtown. Oh, wrap him in something and take him uptown. Dump him in the sewer where he belongs. So they drop the body in the sewer. Can't be alive. Too many bullets. Need to die. End the pine. Not pine. Pain. See, here comes the stupid talk again. How long? Long. Hours. Morning. Long. Okay, so he goes down in the sewers, right? And then, you know, he's really upset. And then we, we cut here, and this is, uh, this is... The end of the flashback, right here. They should say this, but they don't. You only know because he's got the money again, right? So now we've got the money. We're back in present time. He takes the money as the cops are coming. Wee woo, wee woo, wee woo. He sneaks off into the alley. The cops show up. What happened? What could have done this to him? Beats me, but I wish he was on the force. Comes in, the, you know, into the underground. The bums are sleeping. Uh, Rush Limbaugh, who's not Rush Limbaugh. He's actually, God dang it. You hate it when I don't remember the name. Oh, Chase Naylor. I should know that. I know a guy named Ace Naylor. What a quinky dink. First lesson learned every mushy headed liberal ought to learn is there's no such thing as altruism. Nobody does the right thing just because it's right. They do it because it makes them feel good, or because it turns a profit, or because they're scared they'll get caught if they don't. That, my friends, is human nature. You hear anybody, friend, neighbor, politician, claim the moral high ground, you just laugh in their face. Nobody's better than you. Nobody's less selfish than you. Nobody's more moral than you. Except maybe some cop or marine who lays his life on that squelch and he breaks the radio and the, the homeless guys are like, Whoa, who's that? Can't, can't stand that loudmouth bastard. Aubrey, what was that thing? It looked like, like a walking sludge heap. Holy jeez, that's no way to talk about Santa Claus, fella. Next issue, because they pay me. Okay, so we'll see what's going on with that. Um, I can't believe I'm going to say it, but I'm going to track down a couple, three more issues of Sludge and see how this turns out, because uh, this was surprisingly an enjoyable comic book. And then, you know, then we get, oh, another hot shot of Diane there. Then we get to this. Yes, the long wait is over. In case you've been living under a rock for the last few months and haven't heard, the legendary Barry Windsor Smith <laughs> and our own editor-in-chief, Chris Olm, have co-created the latest star in the Ultraverse firmament. Rune! Don't take my word for it. Take a gander at the flip side of this very issue and the spectacular work Barry is doing on this title. Then get back to me. I'll wait. Back already? Take another look. You know you want to. Pretty awesome, huh? I bet you want to know where you can get other issues. Glad you asked. 
Baloney. So, it's a flip book. You know, I bought it for this. That's all I want to say. 50 cents. Bought it for this. 50 cents. Local back issue, man. Rune on the back side. I didn't know until I opened it and I got to the end. I was like, oh no. Oh no. Rune issue A. The stones are cast. Or is this because he, is this a scarlet letter? Is he an adulteress in a past vampire life? And then I open it. Oh, man. There we go. I can keep going. Rune, a voracious killer whose prey is all humanity. An alien leech who despoils the flesh of his victims, culling their lifeblood into the essence of power. Rune, an ancient sorcerer whose necromantic gemstones foretell the future and decipher the past. Rune, a dying creature fighting for survival against the malignant disease burning inside of him. Rune, the journey begins. And here we have some of the epic Barry Windsor Smith art that every like mega comic book nerd of the mid 90s, typically you would recognize these guys they would have like long curly hair that goes past their shoulders, even though that was not really popular come the mid nineties. Uh, they would typically be wearing all black, even though like goth and industrial had not really like kicked into high gear yet. They would typically be seen reading uh, an elf book or perhaps an advanced Dungeons and Dragons book. Uh, and they would be sp just spewing love and about Barry Windsor Smith and how amazing he was, and I don't know why. But I'll read this uh, just to drive myself insane. With palsied hands, the stones are cast. How they settle, where they point, which face they show, will determine his path toward survival, or extinction, or something more. Though he has performed this ritual for 10,000 years, the gems still surprise him with their cruelty. At the nadir of his strength, as cancer consumes his ancient heart, they bait him with hope. The mystic fire stings his brittle lungs. Unmistakable! The scent of power! Power to hunt, to feed, to banish the malady that devours me from within. Power to make myself whole again. Let the journey commence, and the world tremble. Rune shall live. Who cares? Oh my gosh, dude. Who cares? He's wearing this LGBTQ necklace. He's got this stupid, ugly-ass face. He's not nearly as cool as the vampires in Blade 2. God. Hate Rune. I hate Barry Windsor Smith so much. Stupid. So stupid. <sighs> Ugh. Drives me insane. And then, you know, you get this little Nightman special look, a little peek. This was actually kind of interesting. This talks about uh, how Steve Englehart, you know, is a lover of Batman and Dick Tracy and uh, characters who lived in the dark in the dead of night and how he wrote what was considered in the, in the 1970s to be the definitive Batman and that's what inspired the Batman movie and after several screenwriters had failed to capture the essence of Batman, he was brought in to write treatments for the movie and then the movie finally got made uh, because of his treatments and then uh, him and Dave Lapham co-created Shadow Man for Valiant, which is about a stupid jazz player who likes to go out in the dead of night and do voodoo stuff. And then uh, the next year, Malibu asked him to create a character. And so he created Nightman, which is another stupid jazz player who likes to go out in the middle of the night. Uh, Nightman's powers are really cool till you get to the last one, though. I will, uh, I will briefly talk about this, even though we should be talking about Sludge, because it seems much more entertaining. So a cable car in San Francisco uh, like crashed and blasted shrapnel into this dude's brain. His, his name is Johnny Domino. <sighs> Johnny Domino. 
So the shrapnel gets stuck in his brain. Months later, he's recovered, but his life has changed forever. The doctors were unable to remove the shrapnel without doing greater damage, though they assured him it's no longer life-threatening. Still, his eyes no longer dilate, so he has to wear sunglasses during the day, though he sees better than ever in the dark. His brain sleep center is destroyed, so he's always awake, even in the dead of night. But neither of those changes would have made him an ultra hero. See, they're all ultra heroes, like the heroes in the Ultraverse are ultra heroes. No, it was the third effect. The ability to hear other people's evil thoughts. So then all of a sudden, they just like they kind of corrupt this interesting character by just taking something from the shadow that everyone's very familiar with and using that. Because, um, I mean, who knows what evil lurks in the hearts of men? The nightman knows. Oh, no, the shadow knows. So I had just liked it as a normal dude whose pupils couldn't dilate and whose sleep center was destroyed. So he's up all night, but he can see incredibly well in the dark. And I thought that would make for an interesting vigilante character. And I thought, you know, it's kind of dumb that he can actually hear people's evil thoughts, in my opinion, because it's already been done. It's like tried and true shadow, so don't go there. But nonetheless, you know, you get a story. I'm not going to... And then you get the mighty Magnor. And uh, I'm not going to bother with that either, even though it does have this line. These guys are going to try to rob this bank. Please, don't shoot me. I have a wife and children and a pussycat and a gay lover. Okay. So I think we've determined Malibu is not exactly for kids. Like, he should be, like, I don't know, 15 and up maybe to be able to read uh, the Ultraverse. So far, this is just my opinion based on Sludge and based on uh, Solitaire uh, Mantra, which I, I really like. I'm going to read some more of that here later this week. That's okay. Sludge was awesome. Barry Windsor, Barry Windsor Smith's rune sucks. Sludge is awesome, though. So, if you want to uh, if you want to give it a little taste, I already gave you a little taste here. Uh, maybe you can go pick up issues 2, 3, and 4. I'm going to pick them up. Sometime in the distant future, I will probably talk about them on camera. Until then, keep sticking around, because we still got more Malibu comics to go through this week as we explore the Ultraverse here on Crypto Comics. <laughs>